so let's let's please keep the conversation going. Um, that's everything I've got. I believe we're going to move to a uh, panel discussion now hosted by Studio Republic. So um, <laughs> back over to you. Amazing. Thank you, Mel. That was um, really, really insightful. I learned quite a lot from that talk and the tactics were really, really helpful. So framing, giving credit, sharing credit, laying the foundations against belief systems, accessibility and representation and protecting your platform. All really helpful. Um, thank you. I think if you've got any questions for Mel, we're going to jump straight into the panel now, but we'll, we'll make some time at the very end. I think there's a few questions that have popped up already in the chat. You can use the chat or you can use the Q&A window, whatever suits you best. Um, but let's dive in and have, have a chat, shall we? Um, so the word ethical can be uh, misinterpreted and misused. We've discussed sustainability this morning. We've discussed purpose this morning. Um, so let's just set the scene by defining what we're talking about when we mean ethical marketing. What is it? And perhaps more importantly, what is it not? Um, Mal, if you want to tee us off with that. Sorry, finding my mute button. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, for me, it's, it's, it's two things. I think, first of all, it's, it's about being genuinely committed to your principles. Um, and I think that when this is the case, it will sort of naturally shine through in the way that um, that you communicate. But then secondly, I think it's about taking seriously the power that you have as a communicator um, and making sure that you're using that power responsibly. You know, if we think that we uh, can influence these people on behalf of our organizations or, or our clients, um, then thinking like, what is the, what's the nature of that influence and how can I honor my own values in doing that I think we're off to a great start mm. and actually something that you you brought in towards the end there in terms of representation and relationship building is about consistency and not expecting that you can suddenly change direction overnight and position yourself as this perfect ethical being it's yeah. about taking the time to build relationships build trust with uh, users or your audiences um what do you think Gavin yeah thanks Larry uh, and thanks for the talk Mal that was re really really good um some great stuff. I, I, I think it's really it's, it's important when we're talking about ethical marketing or or, or an ethical strategy, it's, it's important to baseline what we actually mean by that. And I think you know the the the, the title of the talk today is around purpose, um, and then we're now talking about ethics, and they're, they're, they're slightly different things. I think I think we're you know with from from ethics for me is more of a philosophical standpoint you know so openness honesty transparency in everything that we do um and uh, whereas perhaps um purpose and purpose-led marketing is perhaps something a little bit more more difficult um different and focused on on uh, on, on on giving those things a particular drive and around a particular subject mm, i suppose purpose ultimately is something that you hope runs a lot deeper that's the main distinction i guess is purpose needs to run a lot deeper needs to be in your dna new or old ethics is more the day-to-day -day housekeeping of being a good functional company in the 21st century exactly and then we, and then we're getting into the realms of, of of business ethics on on top of marketing ethics mm -hmm. which which as you say you know run, runs deeper and i think that um, both both tracks run parallel, certainly for for our business. You know, the the way that we operate as a business is the way that we we talk about ourselves, uh, and the the the, you know, the the way that we present ourselves to the, to the wider world. Mm. And I think if we accept that something's wrong, like uh, gender imbalance <clears throat> or carbon emissions, then that accepted way of doing things in terms of business as usual is almost becomes unethical and so the ethical thing to do is to actually do something different that actually tries to mitigate that issue mm. being truth truthful and transparent in all things which i guess we're going to come on to in a bit more detail um next i think that's a really key ingredient um more for more for the agency folk this time then to what extent do you feel climbing trees in kayam or the sector, the agency sector at large, considers the full breadth of ethical components when we're carrying out CSR marketing for ourselves and, and for our clients. So um, how frequently does the topic of, you know, your carbon footprint come up against diversity and inclusivity policies? Do you consider your internal ethics as much as the way you treat your customers and clients? Um, Gavin, what do you think? Yeah, I, I 
I, I think absolutely. You've, you've got to consider all of these things in the round. None, none, of, none of it should be considered as a, a standalone element. Um, and and the yeah, the, the the ethos on which you run your company is 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 how you should uh, should present it to the wider world. As I was saying previously, and I think it's um it's, it really is one and the same. How we you know if, if we're talking about uh, running our business um, in a in a in a in a way that does the least possible harm, or even even better, into a way that uh, that actually has positive impact on the world. And I think that's what what, what Alex was talking about in his, in his introduction mm. when he was saying, you know, by taking stands like becoming a B Corp, um, presenting these things to to the wider world, your your you know you your your actual makeup as a company becomes your marketing message, and I think that's a, you know, that's a that's a that's a, a real change that we're seeing across the industry and um, and massively in uh, in in, uh, in the world of digital marketing and agency world generally. Absolutely, and I think it's um, that change. So five years ago, we, there were like five of us. Now there's twelve, so it's not like massively that much bigger. But I think in that in that process, the change from being just five, five years ago, just a profit driven enterprise to then becoming more purpose driven, we have um, surfaced a lot of areas and opportunities for improvement. And I think that that's part of the process. And it's there's things that I did, like uh, our choice of bank, for example, where I look at it and I think, what was I thinking 11 years ago by choosing that particular high street bank? There is a much more robust and um, uh, ethical and sustainable organisation that I could actually work with, but I didn't actually take the time to think about it. I went, I went with a bank that gave me a dictionary when I was fourteen. Um, <laughs> That's how they get you. Yeah. We we know which bank you mean, Alex. <laughs> but, but I won't say who it is. Um, so I think no matter how like like we're doing as a business and an industry, I think that for me it's like you unsurface these opportunities for improvement, and then you have to try and approach them with courage and unpick that sort of Gordian knot. And I think there's a massive opportunity to do better, mm. both personally um, in the business and then as an industry as well. And, and the idea of it being a process as well, right? It's, it's you know, yeah, it's, it's, it, we, we don't stand still. Um, and I think, uh, you know, well, Kyan's been running for, for 18 years now. Um, and, uh, you know, when, so when we started in business, these, these ideas were, were quite fringe, really. Um, but, you know, we've seen it grow and grow over time. We've always set ourselves out to be a good business that, that, that operates honestly, treats our staff and our, car, our, our clients and our customers um, as well as we can and be the best business we can be. But, um, you know, the idea of, of then putting that into a framework um, like B Corp, becomes you know it's it, 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 it that becomes a a, a, a more um constitutional um and core part of what we do mm. and and that then builds and becomes part of your you know you you start it as an internal process but it, it then just um spreads out and uh, becomes very addictive actually and obviously the b corp so Kyan is b corp studio republic is a b corp as well the idea of joining something like that yes it's the kind of thoroughness of the process itself but because we want to be seen as being part of a bigger movement bigger than ourselves um, and that's what these sorts of awesome monks are it was interesting to see uh was it four percent in your research i think four percent of agencies and 12 percent of clients all the other way around ranked B, becoming a b corp as um a key to being a kind of successful agency and sustainability space. I actually thought that was going to be higher. So we obviously need to do a better job of championing the community. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, Gavin, you do that kind of thing, don't you, with Bima? I, I, I do, yes. Um, we've got a we've got a what we call a B Corp boot camp running with Bima at the moment. So helping other agencies um, uh, to become certified um, in very practical terms. So yeah, and, and that's very much part of the B Corp ethos is is spreading the word um and yeah you know, I, I was surprised at how low as well flurry mm. um given you know the, I, the the massive backlog that that b corp is ex experiencing at the moment and um you know the the fact that uk b corps have doubled in the past year um you know so so it's it's, it's growing but it's small um yeah. but i guess 
So yeah, we we, we do need to do more. And I, oh, we're we're doing our little part. Yeah, doing our bits where we can. Go Beacock. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was transparency, which came up uh, in your research and your talk, Alex, and also in the, in the way that you're working now. I thought it was interesting that you actually opened up your talk with "We're not perfect." And that's on behalf of Greenpeace, and you're probably one of the best up there. Um, so uh, something that we talk about a lot at Studio Republic, and I wanted to ask you guys, is how important you think it is to communicate, actively communicate about the shortcomings um, of your ethics, your purpose, your journey, um, if at all. How open and honest should you be about failures or progress that's slower than you thought it was going to be? Um, Gavin? Yeah, I, 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 again... Um, I think that it's it's the, the 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 core value of openness and transparency means that you have to um, you know you have to acknowledge your shortcomings as much as you celebrate your successes. And I think in 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 our part of uh, of operations in the in the tech sphere, um, gender and ethnicity diversity are, are yeah you know, they're they're industry wide issues. And at Kyan we're no different. Um, but I think it's about recognizing it as a problem and something that, well, that, that, that you should strive to change and set the policies in place and actively, actively look for, for different voices. And I'm not just talking about, I am talking about gender and ethnicity, but also, um, educational backgrounds or economic backgrounds. Um, Mal was talking, uh, you know, uh, 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 about, um, neural diversity and the, the fact that, uh, you know there there are many different ways of, of looking at that and um and 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 we we struggle like a lot of people in the industry but i think um, it's b corp requires you to to publish your um environmental performance and i think you know publishing all of these these aspects of of things that where you're trying to do better um is is as important as uh, as, as showing where you're you're shining a light as a just a bit of anecdotal um, evidence, so part of what we have to do as B Corp is obviously an impact report. They're not uh, super explicit in terms of what the contents of that impact report has to be. And there's a bit of kind of creative flexibility around what you choose to report on. But actually what that provides you with is an opportunity to, to unearth every single minutiae that you think is worth talking about. We just have a section in ours called Transparency in All Things. We identify all the things that have influenced us in that year, of which the last couple of years have been very influential. Um, and then now that's something that we're gonna track every year. And again, same for us is gender diversity, neurodiversity, um, and having lived experience in our agency that mirrors the, you know, the clients and the audiences of the clients that we want to appeal to as well. Yeah, I think having that that transparency ethos in general, I think is 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 really helpful because you know it's that thing of like what gets measured gets done. Um, and certainly in yeah. uh, <laughs> thinking about like talking about our own shortcomings, you know, Greenpeace with the, the whole um, bread and butter is giving people a hard time. So giving ourselves a hard time comes quite naturally. Um, <laughs> but also we. Um, from a kind of from a campaigning point of view if i'm thinking about um the way that we engage with with companies um that that you know have um some you know kind of issue around like deforestation or ocean protection or something like that we really see the um uh openness about those shortcomings and where where people feel like they've, they've fallen short on their aspirations as really being a sign of good faith and a sign of commitment um to those principles because actually if you're um just making a commitment and then either just not talking about it at all or mm. only um, showcasing the stuff that's gone right, it sort of suggests that you're probably not as engaged with the messy reality of this stuff as you could be. Um, so we're, yeah, we're always looking for signs of like, can we trust a company's commitment um, on this stuff? And actually often one of them is them saying, actually, yeah, we got that one wrong. Or, mm. you know, we set like like too high of an aspiration for ourselves and we couldn't, we couldn't meet it and here's why. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess I'd encourage people not to be afraid of that kind of openness either, because I think it can actually read as a, a good thing. So, and it, fe it feels counterintuitive to do that. So in marketing, mm. we all want to put our best selves forward and project an image of awesomeness with some jazz hands or something. <laughs> and so to then actually surface some of the very worst aspects of what you're doing. So in terms of the challenges that we face, 
it's a say mind shift isn't it i know for us we have an internal intranet where we're housing stuff like gender balance the targets that we have diversity targets and that's internal and i felt when i first when we first started doing that i, I thought that i was going to have an angry mob turn up outside with like flaming torches and pitchforks mm. telling me what a bad person i was and um, that hasn't happened yet, thankfully. But then we're having a web, uh, our website redesigned at the moment. And so we're thinking about how we can then actually share that information publicly because there's a sort of level of authenticity. So it's almost like this is where we're at. These are our targets. And then we update that on an annual basis going forward. I wonder if there's an element of uh, crisis management that agencies need to understand how to... <laughs> kind of adopt because I think that the only risk right I'm not, I'm not against any of these things I, I'm in total agreement the more transparent the better but then in the situations where you really do set yourself quite big targets and you fall very short and maybe they're quite crucial to the way that consumers your clients see you how do you kind of deal with that and I guess we're not necessarily you know as digital creative agencies crisis management as one <laughs> service isn't necessarily something we're used to so just knowing how to deal with those challenges as they arise on your journey and maybe, maybe there's something from the agency side as well. If you're if you're working with a, a company that wants to set a big target and to to communicate it as a sort of a, a positive commitment, to to say, okay, well, look, we can we can only communicate this effectively to you if you if we know that you've got a substantial plan to meet it. Because that's mm -hmm. always the again the thing that we pick up on at Greenpeace is people will say, well, we're going to reduce this by forty percent in the next five years. We say well, that's great, but how? Mm -hmm. And like often that's the thing that's missing. Um, and when you do that, then that's often where you, where you you fall short. So, um, I guess you know when, if you're seeing that kind of thing time and time again with um, with clients or with peers in the industry, then um, picking up on that at the sort of that initial stage is probably quite a helpful yeah. intervention. Or a planning stage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think there's a um, literary perspective. So, in terms of consumers and for business, in terms of sharing what their impact is, there's a, a sneaker company, Vija. I think they've got a really nice impact segment on their website where they just say, this is our impact. This is what we're doing about it. But actually, we sell leather shoes. There's going to be an impact in terms of what that looks like. And so the consumers can make an informed decision based on that. And so I think there'll be a rising tide in terms of people being able to uh, consume based on that kind of information rather than being blindsided by it. Mm. There is an app, actually, I don't know if it's any point in me mentioning this because I couldn't remember the name. If anyone watching this knows, there is an app where you can basically look at different, I think it's FMCG and fashion brands now, and basically see their CO2 emissions there. So it kind of side by side in data tables. Hopefully someone out there will know. Otherwise, we'll put it in the follow up email, find it before then. Perfect. Um, okay. Com compare it. Oh, there we go. We're just, we're Thank just you very much, LT. From our, from our informed audience. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think um, all, all, all birds, um, the, the, mm. the B Corp um, shoe brand, uh, shoe and fashion brand, have now actually started putting um, carbon stamps on their clothing to so say how much an individual, you know, what, what the carbon yeah. cost of, of producing an individual set of tracky bums or, uh, or a hoodie was. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, it is interesting to see these things being you know being baselined, and then uh, hopefully the next time that, that they produce that 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 mm. thing, it will will have a, a lower carbon cost. And um, they become educational institutions in the process. You know, Oatly did the show us your numbers campaign, huge billboards all over the place showing their CO two emissions per carton, asking other products in the similar space to do it. And actually, I don't know what those numbers mean. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily make sense to me as a consumer, but I know it's important to understand those things and it kind of sets you on a journey to want to look into those things a bit more, I think, in the process. Yeah. Um, so, so that's externalising internal stuff as, as, as external messaging again, just what we were, yeah, what we were yeah. talking about previously. Actually. Yeah, and it, and it putting, working and probably putting down. That stuff up. As it's now yeah. said, that's down to them doing um, really thorough planning to make sure that what they set out with is going to going to work and not going to come back to bite them in the end I think yeah, sure. um, so for agencies the ability to be seen as ethical is largely determined by the clients that we work with uh, what are the names that we throw up on our logos page on our website how single-minded should ethical agencies like ours be when selecting clients and vice versa Alex you want to go first so 
historically we haven't been um, as a business. So we haven't had, if someone wanted to pay us and we could deliver based on their targets, historically we would have done that. I don't, we wouldn't have, I don't know. We had an inquiry from a high interest uh, consumer goods brand once, which we chose not to work with. Um, and so we haven't just like let anyone in. It's not like we're working with people that um, like do horrific things or anything like that. But I think we haven't had any internal processes. I think that's the point I'm mm. getting, getting to. And so we have um, when gone through the process of canvassing our team's opinion. And so we've got a survey. So would you work on a high interest account where a carbon emitter or someone that um, has supply chain issues with child labour and all of these kind of things? And we're drawing that into... Um, and there's quite varying views as well in terms of people have difference of opinion in mm. terms of some people are quite comfortable working with um, a sausage company, whereas other people uh, wouldn't feel comfortable because they're vegan. And so I think that what that then puts to me a challenge of then saying this is our company framework and then I run and work on all our new business internally. So I would then benchmark all new business inquiries against that. And so I think we're in the process of doing something, but I think part of it is, I don't think we're ever only going to work with sustainable, ethical or purpose-driven companies, but I think what we're open to is having those conversations with mm. companies that aren't. Doing more of them. And actually that, that is a, quite a challenge in itself, Alex, navigating 12, 15 different people's view of what is ethical and trying to find a happy place in the middle. <laughs> and I think we're not... Thankfully, we're not a democracy. It's a benevolent dictator. Yeah. <laughs> and so I can just say, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then scale that up and do it with 50 people like us. And then <laughs> scale it up again to do it with a, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a global um, agency brand and who, who, you know, someone like um, Media Amongst the Rest for C Capital, who, are, who, are, who are got 81 different territories worldwide um different entities worldwide but they're they're struggling to become b corp are they going to canvas all of their staff on which accounts they work on it's, a, <laughs> it's you know the, the, there are there are levels here and i think this this is where leadership does come into it mm. um I, I i feel quite strongly around i think for me it's around the intent it's not necessarily around the history of a brand or around what industry they work in it's more about are they focused on on doing better? And I think there is uh, a, a, a danger that if we strive to have that pure, pristine, clean logo wall of all good, ethical, purpose-focused brands, um, then we're, we're potentially missing a, a uh, missing a, an, an opportunity as purpose-driven organisations to 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 be an agent for change um, and to you know, to help companies or you know people who are perhaps involved in heavy industry um or in a, or in a traditionally polluting sector to 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 try and do better especially if they want to build comms around that mm -hmm. um but obviously we're then into the realms of beware greenwashing beware purpose washing mm -hmm. um and uh it's it, it is it is a minefield but i, I just want to uh, avoid that only preaching to the choir um talking in our in our little sustainable mm -hmm. purpose during an echo chamber so echo chamber. it's something we need to look look out for i would be actually interested for mal's opinion on this as someone who kind of is seen to fight against such organizations do you think there is a key role for agencies to play in bringing these sorts of brands to the table i mean i guess we're talking about all the obvious oil companies and things like that should we bring them to the table because we might be able to change their ways <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I suppose I would, like, the, 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 the campaigner in, in me wants to think about this in terms of, of power balance, right? Like, if you're um, working with a, you know, a particular subsection of an enormous multinational corporation um, that has a particular, like, focus for its business model or strategy, like, I think, realistically, your chances of being able to meaningfully influence their overall direction and I think for something like a fossil fuel company like it's the overall direction that's the problem it's not that they're leaving the lights on on the oil rig it's the the fact that they're building more oil rigs um so I think I think with something like that I think knowing knowing what you want to happen when they get to the table and what you can realistically expect from that is is key whereas I think if you're working with a smaller organization I think um 
you know they're more able to they're more able to change they're more um kind of receptive to influence from kind of like maybe through like more informal channels like an agency relationship or something like that and you know if there's someone um again thinking about like the good people within the process even if that company is sort of neutral or maybe not great actually if you can really inspire someone who already wants to do the right thing to push harder for it mm. then that might be well worth doing um but I'd be a bit skeptical with um someone like BP where it's just a, a bit of a juggernaut you know like there's not preaching to the choir but also like I don't say preaching to the devil but like there are some people <laughs> who probably can't be swayed right <laughs> let's just put it that way fair enough <laughs> um yeah I think I, I just say think about that, that the the power that you have to influence the, the people you're talking to mm. um We've spoken about B Corp here before, Gavin, as well. A number of times, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. In terms, in terms of uh, B Corp being a, a, a signifier here for uh, yeah, but not not being kind of restrictive in terms of saying thou shalt not work with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I I, I attended a B Corp event where they um yeah where where the actual the the idea of uh, in fact. The oil company we were just discussing, uh, then were, BP were named and said that you know uh, one of the founder B Corp um, a agencies said the day that BP tries to become a B Corp I'm out. You know this is this is getting too this is getting too much. Whereas mm -hmm. actually um, one of the, the 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 actual B leader there said, well you know if BP wants to try to become a B Corp. Then bring it on because at least we're at least we're we're trying. You know, I I I, I could never see them making it because of uh, as Mal was saying. You know, the core of the industry is, is you know, is uh, is is against too many of the principles. But um, but at least if we can have that conversation and we can try to bring people forward, then um, then then that uh, you know sometimes that's enough. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I I do take Mal's point that uh, you know you, you need to look at it in terms of scale. And how much influence you can actually uh, have on that, and maybe um, for smaller agencies like ourselves, mm. um, fishing in our in our in our smaller pond and uh, and dealing with more SME clients, we can make a real difference there. Yeah, at scale. Okay, so where does a responsibility lie to advise on and push an ethical agenda? Again, coming back to your research. Um, Alex, you stated there was a bit of an over-reliance on agencies from an ethical standpoint to try and move them forward where really the drive should be coming from them internally. Is it agencies? Is it clients? Is it consumers at the end of the day? Or the government? Whose responsibility is it? Um, what do you think? So I, I think it's personal responsibility. And so it's about looking at what you have influence over. And so as a person and as a business owner, I can influence, you know, how I do things personally and how I, things are run within the business. And so it's down to each individual to try and do that part. The, the polemic in terms of, oh, it should be this or that, or it should be the government or it should be big business. I just sort of think there's all that, all that stuff you're powerless over but I can buy a better car or I can choose to not go on long haul flights. And I, you know, I can, we historically used to take the team away with some cheap easy jet flights to a fantastic city in Europe and having been through the B Corp application process and then looked at the carbon emissions of that decision mm -hmm. as a team, I know my team really want to go on a really nice um, European trip next year. And so I'm sort of thinking about Eurostar, which is probably about eight times the cost. However, and so it's, it's, you know, I don't really know what I'm saying. So it's, it's, it's affecting what you have power over, I think. Gavin? Mm. Well, for me, I think it, it, it has to come from all, all sectors. It has to come from all aspects. I think, you know, if you look at the difference that uh, the industry is making versus the, 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 the difference that uh, the, the government worldwide is making on the climate change agenda, then you would probably say, it's actually falling to industry right now that that, that where people are making the changes um you know, you have the you know, obviously you have people talking uh, as we are today ar around this and moving the moving the conversation on um but i think it will never really change until it comes from government 
and we're mandated to to report on these areas mm. and there are things there are things in, in process you know the the better businesses act is is at its second reading i believe um you know we're, if if as and when these things come into practice i think that's when when things really will change um it's a bit like the seat belts rule it's a bit like anti-smoking it's only when you get when you actually see legislation that um that, that you see that a mm. uh, significant change and it's not just people who are you know who are voluntarily focused on it like we are um that that is actually required so bring on the better businesses act i say Absolutely. yeah and that seatbelt thing's interesting i was listening to a book and um uh, seatbelt adoption in the us was 12 percent legislation came in and that then moved to 88 percent in terms of compliance with seatbelt and so i think that legislative process will have a massive impact I do think just as an example of a kind of business level of influence, a chap called Cephas Williams, based here in the UK, he started the Black British Network. I don't know if you would have seen him before. Definitely one to follow on LinkedIn in terms of his journey and looking to change the way that black and brown communities are represented in business across the UK. And he's basically going to business, big British businesses at the top end to influence their policies and the way that they treat employees from the top down because they haven't been able to achieve a government level of influence uh, and shift so i think kind of what we're saying is every single level of this structure has has a role has a component um and we just have to influence you know based on what we have in our our remit if we're not going into politics maybe you know we can go and we can sign petitions and we can take to the streets but that's kind of where our influence is limited but when we run our own business and we talk to clients that is kind of our opportunity to change things in our day to day. Um, Mal, did you want anything? Have anything to add? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose building on what, what um, yeah, like uh, people said before, like the 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 existence of things like B Corp and indeed organisations like Greenpeace is sort of a sign that the people with the most power to act have failed to act as much as they would. So you know, in a perfect world, you wouldn't need Greenpeace and you wouldn't need B Corps because everyone would be at that at that level already. Um, yeah, I think generally, like the more power you have, the greater your responsibility. Um, like Green Greenpeace often gets um, some criticism, I think, because when we run a campaign on a particular issue, we will single out one company um, that's that's doing this particular bad thing, and they might not even be the worst company, but they might be the market leader. Um, and so we we hold them more responsible because we think that if they change, then that will have a, a ripple effect across the industry. Um, so, um, yeah, thinking about, about those sort of, um, those power dynamics and, and who has the, the most ability to, to make change and then sort of the responsibility flowing from there. But, you know, in this imperfect world that we have, I think there's always going to be a role for, you know, for leaders and the vanguard and people kind of showing, showing what's possible and, you know, showing governments that you can, um, you know, incorporate these rules and like raise the floor of what's permitted and, you know the the sky won't fall um so I, th I think that's it's actually a really powerful role to play mm. deep it's getting deep isn't it it's difficult not to the subjects like this <laughs> <laughs> um so on my invisible watch isn't here we've got about 10 minutes left um if you've got any questions for Mal or Alex or Gavin or me or any of the above please put them in the chat now I wonder if it's worth us just having one more conversational point and then maybe we can um come back or maybe we've got a question what do you think alex yeah either either there's a couple of good questions in there yeah okay let's jump into some questions we've got um other bits that we can come back to at the end perfect so uh we have a question are there any top tactical recommendations you can give to in-house marketeers to help us be more sustainable that's a big one <laughs> Anyone want to take that one? <laughs> and so I guess um, looking at the full sort of uh, marketing sort of schedule from creative to um, like media execution to messaging to like all the way through the line, you can produce an audit trail where you start benchmarking. Well, actually, if I do a radio ad versus a newspaper ad, what is the impact of that? If I do, <clears throat> if I run some ads on Twitter or Facebook, what is the actual impact of that? And you can start then sort of looking at 
the component parts and making decisions based on that data there. We're trying to model something at the moment where we either offset for our clients or producers a line item, the carbon impact of a campaign running Google ads or Facebook ads or Twitter ads, but trying to actually surface the data in terms of the carbon emissions of one Google search is quite tricky. Um, so I think it is like producing that audit, trying to collate some data together and then making taking action based on that data. Um, this is a good opportunity to bang the cup jam again, isn't it? I think arguably it is one of the most extensive processes that you can go through to, to prove that your business is indeed a force for good. Um, but the beauty is that it, it presents the questions that you wouldn't necessarily think to ask yourself to analyse the right kind of points of data and look at every, you know, no stone left unturned uh, to make sure you're looking at the full view of sustainability and ethics at large. So I think going through that process is really valuable in itself, even before you get the stamp of approval, which you can then use to market and advertise yourself. Um, and there are lots of experts that can help you. Obviously, Gavin, I'm sure will answer any questions. He's number one ambassador. Um, <laughs> but there are B leaders who are basically sustainability professionals who are, whose purpose is to help you navigate that process and gather the right data as well. So there are lots of people out there that can help you with resources. Yeah, there, there, there are a, a, there, there is a lot of help out there. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm not going. I can't think of uh, specific marketing resources off my head, but I think, like Flurry said, I think going through looking at your internal processes um, and just establishing what does an, your your internal ethical marketing policy look like. You know, there are there are, there's plenty of examples online where you can see what other people are doing. But at the end of the day, this is something that is subjective to individuals and organizations and you need to arrive at a consensus what what ethics and sustainability means to you as an organization it's not what someone else has provided um, and b corp does a good way of doing that in as much as it it, it gives the framework for you to discover the areas of strength um, and weakness in your business and i think if you you you, you apply that same process to how you approach your marketing, um, you will come up with a lot of the answers yourselves. Um, and uh, you know, just with that baseline of, of openness, consistency, transparency in all things, um, you know, I think you will, you'll, you'll, you'll come to it, mm. uh, but yeah. And um, just really quickly, Alex, a final point would just be to um, go and have a look at other uh, B Corp impact reports, because from a creative standpoint, a reporting standpoint, and to look at the, the way that they report on information, I think that's give you a good breadth really quickly and something that you can get access to. Yeah, the 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 Forster Forster Communications, um, uh, they're they're a founding B Corp, and the the, the impact produce, um, reports they produce are are a good baseline to to, to think about. So that's one resource we. Perfect. I've got one final question. And it's made my stomach turn. And um, so it's a really good question. So thank you, Samantha. So it's, can you talk about the ethics of advertising on Facebook and Google? We so view viable alternatives. Is there a way to offset supporting these companies? So over to you guys. <laughs> yeah, definitely one for you, Alex. <laughs> um, so because of the market share that they have, um, it's the, the assets and liabilities or pros and cons, whichever way you want to look at it, working with them. So it's about making an informed decision. And what um, Facebook and Google have done, done is democratised the reach of advertising online for businesses from small to large enterprises. And so obviously there are liabilities, which we're all probably uh, fully aware of with both platforms. But I think there is, like Google... They have um, their Google Ads Grants uh, program where they give billions to charities um, globally. And so in terms of being able to, like in terms of alternatives, there are very, very few. So an alternative to Facebook, I think there's been a few that have been started up over the years, but none have really gained traction. Um, alternatives like Google have 88% of searches in the UK, I think 92% of searches globally. So they are this monopolistic power like beer moth. Um, there are alternatives like Ecosia that try and plant trees. 
um, but they take a feed from, I believe it's Google or Bing, and then sync their search results. So it's, all, it's almost like everything tracks back to Google. There is a privacy-based alternative called DuckDuckGo, which I'm a particular favourite of. Uh, so it doesn't track searches and that kind of stuff. It's just the search results are search results, and there's no user behaviour that's that followed through. So it is, um, you know, it is tricky. The, the whole thing is tricky, and I think with both organisations, both Facebook and Google, they have gone to great strides to make sure that they are um, like mitigating carbon um, emissions, that they are carbon neutral, that they do have renewable energy in their sort of stack and that kind of thing. So it's probably an imperfectly uh, imperfect situation, I guess. Yeah, I, th I think maybe what one one thing that would that we sort of come round to, I suppose, at Greenpeace is that if you're if you're going to do genuinely mainstream mass communication, then to some extent you're always going to be making some ethical compromises, right? Like, and this is not a new problem. Um, you know, anyone who's pitching stories to um, to the press, uh, similarly, you know, you're probably going to be uh, dealing with organisations that, on the one hand, are like campaigning against the stuff that you want to happen, and if you can get a story in there, then then maybe you see that as being worthwhile. Um, but it, 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 yeah, ultimately it is really tricky. And I think it comes down to, again, seeing where you can make an influence. If you think there's, we're always gonna have mass communication, then who is working to try and make it work better? Um, what are the, the, you know, the politicians that are pushing for this or the campaigns that are pushing for this? Um, are there any, you said about the better business bill, like are there things kind of going through parliament or ideas coming up that you can support to say like, we wanna be able to do our jobs and reach people and we wanna be able to do it without this, this ethical compromise so what's the role we can play in um trying to make that happen perfect all right so that's bob on 10 o'clock so um i'll wrap us up so thank you everyone for joining us today especially our panelists mal flurry and gavin i really appreciate your input and knowledge and uh, really enjoyed the discussion i hope you all will leave today with a broader overview of ethical marketing and take something practical away that you can implement in your businesses we'll be in touch over the coming weeks with more detail about our research but if you'd like to discuss anything, please just reach out to any of today's panellists. Um, thanks, everyone, and goodbye for now. See you later. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.